Thanks for joining us for this series, I Was Broke But Now I'm Not. Maybe you have been feeling a tugging on your heart to do something different in the area of finances. Maybe you've been wondering why you have not been able to make the impact that you want to make in your career and other areas of your life. You know God is calling you to do something for his kingdom. Maybe not to serve in a position in the local church, but maybe he's calling you to impact the world in the marketplace. Again, maybe your call isn't in the local church, but you have God in your heart and you're stuck. Maybe this message and this series has prodded you in your heart to to do something different. If you're a part of a local church, I want to encourage you to do what we're doing here in the local body, tithe for 90 days. We have a 90 day tithing challenge going on. So if you're a part of a local body, I want to encourage you to tithe where you're going. If you're not, if you're not connected, you're not a member somewhere else and our ministry has blessed you and you want to tithe, you want to join us in this challenge, you want to get with us, I want to make this opportunity available to you to join us in this challenge. Try God, test God, Scripture says in Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have room enough to store it. So I want you to join my faith with your faith and your active obedience in this. As we are closing 2017 and moving into a new season with our faith and journey with the Lord, I want to encourage you to do something different with your money. I'm not going to lie. I don't have a reason to lie. You see what I see. The climate which we live in is getting increasingly more perverse, increasingly more demonic. Christians and believers are losing their powers, not because God is not powerful, but we are not partnering with him and we are not walking in obedience. Here is just one way we can begin to partner with God and bring your obedience aligned with your faith so that you can partner with him and what he's going to do in the earth in this season. Why don't you join me? If you want to give and you're watching this video, simply visit paypal.me slash intouchcdc and you can give there. All gifts are tax deductible. You can also visit newbeesgrove.org slash give. I would love to partner with you in this challenge and watch what the Lord is doing and how he blesses you and how things turn around. Please write me, message me in whatever platform you're viewing this video. If it's YouTube, if it's Periscope or Facebook, if it's by email, contact me any way you want to so we can celebrate the Together. Thank you again for tuning into this series. This has been Dr. Maxwell, and I look forward to what God is doing in your life and partner with you as you partner with God. God bless you. We still in the series, I Was Broke. Now I'm not. If you would turn to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 4. Verses 1 through 7 reads, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, he said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it on one side. She left him, and afterwards she shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Lord, ask for your power and grace to reside upon your servant. Bring your power down. Touch me like only you can. Eliminate distractions. Allow people to be obedient with children's church and babies. Allow all distractions to dissipate in the name of Jesus so that your word may go forth and pierce the heart of your servants and your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. amen. As you take your seat, I'm just start talking. We're continuing our series entitled I was broke now I'm not <clears throat> in this series we have 
been talking about what God's Word teaches us about money and stewardship. We've talked about the important fact that God owns everything. Answer the question of what truly happens when we give and recognize that God wants us and our money to be a part of his story. Today in this final message of the series, I want to talk to you about the recipe for a miracle. I know many people in our church and in our community are in need of a financial miracle. And I believe this message has the power to transform your life. And most of us have experienced a time in our life where we've said it, it would only take a miracle to get me out of this mess. In fact, even though we are in a financial series, this message applies to any situation you are facing where you are desperate for God to show up. Let's start out with some great news. We know the author of miracles. His name is Jesus. He knows your story. He loves you. He is still in the miracle working business. This is an amazing true story of a financial miracle. I believe we can learn so much from this story today. Let's talk about uh, uh, the situation and uncover the recipe for this financial miracle. God likes to show up in the midst of desperation. That's our first point uh, uh, of our, or our ingredient today, this cake we cook in today, a uh, uh, desperate situation. Number one, desperate situation. Second Kings 4 1 says, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that he revered the Lord, uh, but his creditor is coming to take my two sons as slaves. Debt contributed to this situation. Did the husband really understand the jeopardy he was placing his family in when he entered into the debt agreement? Did the husband believe that he was going to die prematurely? The debt directly impacted the family. What did the boys think? The wife was in a desperate and hopeless situation without any savings. Back then, widows were guaranteed to be in poverty. She lost her husband, and now she's facing the loss of her children. Can you imagine living in this dreadful situation? Do you feel you are in a hopeless situation? Do you feel like this lady felt? Do you feel like that today? Well, take heart because this great story of God's faithfulness is going to make you feel good. Number two, seek God. Second Kings 4, 2 through 4 says, Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your son. Pour oil into all the jars as each is filled. Put it on the side. See, when things are hopeless, it is easy to discount everything you have to zero. It is hard to see what you do have because we keep looking at everything we don't have. The widow said, your servant has nothing there at all except a little oil. She said she only had a little oil, but she actually had more than that. Let's go down what she did have. Of course, she had a little oil. She also still had her two sons. The creditor hadn't taken them just yet. She also had neighbors. She had access to the man of God. She was healthy enough to get to the man of God. She had a desperation. See, desperation would cause people to, do, to be willing to do something that they wouldn't ordinarily do. Don't you fight a desperate person. Don't you go to the hood picking out no fight. With your little uh, booze yourself. Don't you, don't you go messing with somebody who don't have nothing to lose because you that's a dangerous person to mess with. I, I don't meet with people that ain't got nothing to lose by myself. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I, I, I got to have a crowd of people around me because I got too much to lose than to have a conversation with somebody who ain't got nothing to lose. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all will get it later on when you go home. If things appear hopeless, it is easy to discount everything to zero. But what do you have? Di you have direct access to God through prayer and his word children, family, friends, co-workers, neighbors. You have skills and education and faith. You have a lot of different things, but let's go to number three. Do what he says. He got quiet. 
Woo. We can hear all this, Lord, but to do what you say. Look, 2 Kings 4, 5 says she left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Sometimes it seems like God is asking you to do some crazy stuff, but just do what he says. See, I'm guessing, but I believe the sons had no issues with complying with mom's orders. It might have been one of the few times in history that children immediately obeyed what mama said. She said, look here, baby, I need you to go get some jaws or be sold into slavery. Now, now y'all know my history, you feel me? I ain't trying to pick the I ain't trying to pick the ladder. I'll go get some jaws, mama. So they went down to go get some jaws. Uh, 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 the neighbors helped by providing empty jaws. Do you think they were asking why she needed the jaws? See, the amazing thing is that God chooses to use people to accomplish his work. Asking a neighbor to allow the entire neighborhood to witness and participate in a miracle. They all knew her husband had died. They all knew her children were in jeopardy of being placed into slavery to repay the husband's debts. And the, the least they could do was give some jaws, but it required the lady and her son to do what God said. See, y'all don't hear me. Do what God said. He said, look here, I need you to pour out the oil. That, that make no sense. I already only have a little bit of oil. Now you're telling me to pour this little bit of oil into something else. It makes no sense. Pastor, why are you telling me to pour my little bit of oil in this cup? I want the same miracle that the lady had, but I don't want to be obedient. See, God is telling you to pour a little oil. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That little oil is 10% of your money. Some of y'all come to church and can't give God a little oil. That's why you don't have an overflowing blessing. Did you read the text? If you really read the text, if you look in your text, the text says that she asked the son for one more, for one more jar, and he said we ran out of jars, and then the oil stopped flowing. So you got to understand the oil in your life flows wherever you give God access to. See, the oil didn't run out until the jars ran out. See, where is the oil not on your life? See, some of y'all think, see, I know I ain't the smartest person. I know I ain't the most gifted person, but I know one thing I got on my life is some oil. <laughs> one thing I got on my life is some oil. I got oil all over my life because I submit to God. Yeah, I sin and fall short just like you do, but Jesus is a miracle worker and I submit to him and when I fall, I take it back to the 90s with Dunham and Clerk and I get back up again because the saint is just a sinner that fell down that had enough sense to get back up because Jesus died for my transgression. He was wounded for my iniquity and now because I call him my God covered by the oil. See, see, y'all got skin so soft for Miss Rosita to go on your mission trip. You, you got off and stuff. You got all that stuff, but back in the day what they only had then was oil. They would pour oil on their hair and let it roll all the way down their body to keep the pest and the pestilence away, to keep the mosquitoes from biting them because they didn't have oil, but they had oil. And any time the bugs hit the oil, they would slide off and they couldn't stand the smell of the oil. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying some of us are broke because we don't have no oil going into our finances because we don't tithe. We don't have any oil in our life. See, 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 you got to understand. It ain't that I'm the smartest person. So let me talk to my enemies for one minute. Enemies, I know you keep trying to hurt me and make me fall, but you can't. I know I'm not the brightest person. I know I'm not the smartest. Lord knows I'm not the most articulate person in the world. But the oil is on my life. And see what the oil does. It causes your enemies and darts to slide off of you. Y'all know what I'm saying? It ain't that you smart, you anointed. The oil stopped flowing when the pots ran out. Your marriage may not be covered because you ain't got no oil on it. Did you submit your marriage on the altar? Your kids acted running amok uh, because did, did you put them on the altar? Wherever you allow God to have access in your life, you will be victorious because the devil can't stand the smell of the oil and the anointing on your life. The pestilence will be rebuked. They can't touch you wherever you have covered by God. And some of us are broke, busted, and disgusted because we don't have the oil in our bank accounts because we're not pouring out a little bit of 10% oil of our finances that God has asked us to do. 
Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. I'm going to tell you something. No matter about your current financial situation, we can learn from this. Have you sought God's will for your life, your marriage, your children, your business, your career? Are you doing what he says? What would have happened if the widow had sought God's guidance but refused to do what he said? She would have gone into poverty, lost her children to slavery, sunk into complete despair. See, some might be able to relate to these feelings and situations. My challenge to you is to seek God and do what he asks you to do. When we are faithful to do our part, he is always faithful to do his part. See, when we're faced with a desperate situation and we seek God, then we do what he says. All this results in a miracle. You take a desperate situation, seek God, do what God says, all that equals a miracle. Number four, a miracle. Second, Second Kings 4, 5, and 7 says, She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her sons, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts and your sons and you can live off what's left. See, that's it. that gets me excited. Can, you, can anyone testify that God provides exactly when we need, right when we ready to give up? What happened here? She was faced with a desperate situation and sought God. She gathered together the energy to do what he said, and God worked a miracle and literally put her in the oil business. See, see, look, 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 look. She did what he said. See, some of y'all are hearing God, but ain't doing what he say. Some of y'all keep praying for a job, ain't filled out not one application. Faith without works is dead. You have to watch and pray. You got to get up off your blessed assurance and do something. It's not just going to happen without something from you. She heard from God, but she did what God said. Now, let me talk to some people out here that just keep giving away stuff when they ain't supposed to. You know what God told her to do? He said, go in your house and shut the door. Shut the door. Don't you let nobody else in. Some of y'all keep blessing all these folk around you. You keep taking care of family members and friends and everybody around you. No, you got to take care of your immediate family first. God's church and let God give you an overflow and tell you where to put your money the next time. Now, one thing about me, my weakness is giving away money. That's why I got to stop hanging around broke folk. That's my weakness. If you're around me and you need something, I can't help it. It kills me that you don't have it. But sometimes God is not telling me to plant the seeds here. That's why I was so glad when I did the reverse and God said, take that midnight train away from Georgia and go to Virginia. Because <laughs> family always needs something. Always. When they know you got it. But sometimes God not telling you to plant it in that ground. And when you plant it in the wrong ground, God has a way of getting your attention. Let me tell you how I got my attention. I got this truck, right? It's white. And it just got on my nerves Friday. I had to, I had to get the brakes done, which is, you know, normal. You know, I had to get the brakes done. I had to get the tune up. But then they said I had a leak in my coolant system. I'm like, now look here. Chuck ain't that old now. Y'all telling me how luxurious it are. And I left Lexus and came to y'all and y'all said everything going to be all right. And they told me how much the bill was, $3,400, $3,500. Well, pretty much $3,500. I said, the devil is a lie. <laughs> I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I said it. Now, I love y'all. And when God tell me to say something to y'all, y'all get it. Some of y'all feelings get hurt and I apologize. Now, I don't know them people over there. So you know I ain't bite my tongue. I said, Lord, I saw the call people. Look, I need you to call these people because I'm finna, I'm finna go crazy because you know my mouth now. I'm going to just walk out and you talk to them for a minute. Because <laughs> I'm about to lose it in here with this supposed to be luxurious car. I already got to pay the note. Now they're talking about I got to fix it. <laughs> I said, look here. God, I done already gave away my quota for the month. 
I did. I, I give a certain amount of money where I already gave it. And God said, did you give everywhere I said? I said, yeah. But he said, you gave in places I ain't tell you to, too. I ain't know y'all was still back there. I was trying to have a moment <laughs> to myself. But I was like, oh, no. See, he said, shut the door. Some of us need to shut the door. Some of y'all don't have money because you keep giving your money away and not planting it where God told you to plant it or plant it there. So anyway, long story, make it a little bit shorter. Came back and said, all right. So the lady said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take 200 off. And I was quiet. Now, that's a miracle. Maxwell didn't say nothing. She said, 200? I left it alone. Didn't say nothing. All right. Cool. God said, I got it. Be quiet. Just wanted to get you a message. But to be planting seeds, why well, ain't taking to plant them? And to take care of that weakness, you plant what God taking to plant. Some of y'all taking y'all tithes and plant them somewhere else and wondering why the seeds ain't growing. I took my tithe. I did pay my tithe. I gave it to Uncle so-and-so. You know Uncle so-and-so an uh, alcoholic? Then drank all your money. You know it's real. That's why you looking at me crazy. Ain't nobody told me the story. Just the anointing. Just the oil on my life. So just, just stop, stop getting. See, some of y'all tell on y'all selves because I don't even know who it is. Sometimes I can look at your face and be like, oh yeah, it was her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I try not to look at you directly. So some of y'all might think I'm cross eyed, but anyway, the lady said take two hundred off. So I went back to the to the to the shop. I looked at the bill. The quote still said thirty five hundred dollars, or thirty four hundred dollars, and ninety six dollars, or something like that. But anyway, I'm gonna send y'all the pictures of the bill when I email y'all on Monday about the title, so y'all can know it's a true story. And, and so so then I got there, and then I looked, and I'm like, what? It said twenty one hundred dollars. Get out of here. $1,500 difference. You better watch out somebody. I said, what? $2,100 well, $1,400 difference. $1,400 difference. My God is able. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I don't know. See, you might not be shouting because it ain't your money, but I'm going to shout by myself. I went in there thinking it was going to be $3,500. Went in there and just paid $2,100. Some of y'all say that's still a lot, but to my reference point, because I'm blessed, I'm happy. See, 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 some of y'all don't understand this because you get mad when you got a bill. See, I don't get mad when I got a bill. I just rejoice that I can pay it. God gave you money to pay your bills. Some of y'all don't want to pay none of your bills. I wanted to pay, but I just didn't feel like I need to pay them $3,500. And I had to take a note from Tudor Bismarck and say, uh-uh, Lord, I claim my tithe and rice. I might have planted some seeds where I wasn't supposed to plant them, but I don't like having to pay. I See, see, this is what I do. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach y'all something. See, that man died in debt. I never leave my family in debt. See, me, I use my credit card to get my sky miles. But if I can't pay it off at the end of the month, but whatever I charge with the amount of money I bring in with the check or whatever I got, so I don't like going to my savings to pay no credit card. I, if, if I can't pay in that, in, that, in, that, in that payment cycle, I can't get it. So I'm telling God, now, you know I live debt free. Now, this right here, I ain't going to be able to pay this whole credit card bill off with what I already gave away this month. I need you to take care of me. I claim my tithe and rights. Now, God said, I'm going to take care of you even though you did a foolish thing. You keep putting your money where I ain't telling you to put your money, but I'm going to take care of you anyway. Do you know God will rebuke the devourer sometimes even if it's yourself, if you're in covenant relationship with him? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? The oil did not stop flowing until the pot stopped. What in your life are you not being obedient to God about? What? Is it your money? Are you not giving it where he tells you to give it? Or are you putting it where he's not telling you to put it? What are you not obedient about? It's so quiet in here because people don't like hearing about money and giving money. But the thing about it is, don't you want to not be broke? I want you to be able to say, I was broke. Now I'm not. Or I was never broke or something like that. I don't want you to keep saying, I'm broke. I ain't got this. I, I got that. Um, he said in, in 2 Kings 4, 7, he says, go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live off what is left. God provided enough. 
How much is enough for you? See, this is not about getting wealthy or having a bunch of stuff. God gave you more than enough. The widow asked for help to save her sons from slavery, and God did that. Plus, he provided enough for all three of them to live off. God fixes tough situations, even when they are self-imposed. God is a great forgiver and provider. You understand that? See, this is my prayer. And I'm, I'm done, pretty much. It's my prayer that this series has helped you in a real and substantial way. See, I want you to know that as the leader of this church and deacons and trustees, the ones that's tithing, are committed to helping you win in your life. I love you. See, your generosity is great. You know, you saw the film, how we took care of people in Houston and how we took care of people in Haiti and how we take care of people in Puerto Rico and how we take care of people in the Virgin Islands and St. Thomas and all around the world. It's because of your generous gifts that we're able to have an overflow, pay our bills and still help people in the community and around the world. It's because of your generosity. Now, I think we had 100% people tithing. God does financial miracles you know when I really knew God did a miracles not just when he took care of my car and stuff like that when I came to church and started realizing how many people in the church don't tithe yet God still sustains the church God still blesses the church God still gives the church a good measure blessing press down shake it together and run it over and when people don't tithe in the pews People on Periscope and Facebook Live and, and YouTube and all the different places take care of us and bless us immensely. Why? Because God is always and still is in the miracle working business. He will always give an overflowing blessing. But this series is not just about money. What I want to do is finish this series by offering you time of prayer for those who are facing desperate situations and need a miracle. Not just, not just financial, but health, relationship, and spiritual. Do you understand what I'm saying? This series is about being accountable and doing what God asks you to do. This is about becoming in covenant with God. So what I realized, deacons and trustees and ministers and all that, they don't understand about covenant covenant with me because they ain't even in covenant with God. If you're not in covenant with God and playing your, paying your tithes and your offerings, you can never come in covenant with a man because you ain't even in covenant with God. But the first thing is, until you learn how to come in covenant with a man, you will never learn how to come in covenant with God anyway. Because he said, how can you love me and who you have not seen and don't love the person you see? How can you come in covenant with me, God, if you can't come in covenant with somebody on earth who's set in authority over you? 